Hi, it's Cassie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and blog. Today I have a card for the Lawn Fawn Attic Challenge number 26, which is to make a card set. And so I'm going to be using the Lawn Fawn set Thanks a Bushel. I start out by using some Strathmore 140 pound cold press watercolor paper, and I'm going to be stamping my images with some Versafine Onyx Black ink. I decided to use that ink in particular because I plan to watercolor all of my images and it is a water friendly, waterproof uh, ink. So I'm going to stamp all those out on there along with some apples and I even use another little strip to stamp some more apples. Once I'm done stamping I set those to the side to dry and I'm going to apply some bundled sage distress oxide ink to my craft mat which is a non-porous surface and I'm going to be doing some ink smushing. Now if you've seen me or been to any of my channel before you know that I enjoy doing this. I like it because it gives a different image every time and um, I, I, don't know, I just really enjoy the look of it and because I'm doing a card set it'll be kind of neat because all four of the different cards the background will be just slightly different even though I'm using the exact same ink and I'm gonna dry in between as you can see with my heat tool and I'm gonna do it again but I'm not gonna show that so now I'm gonna do some water coloring and I'm gonna use that same bundled sage distress oxide to color all of those apples and I'm doing that with my number four silver black velvet watercolor brush I'm not doing anything special here as I watercolor other than maybe trying to sort of avoid the black lines and the reason I'm trying to avoid the black lines is because I'm not sure how that's going to dry on those inked lines. I'm not sure if it'll cover it because the Distress Oxides when they dry they have a little oxidized look to them and uh, anyway it's, it's really pretty I think. So now I'm grabbing um, some gathered twigs is what it's called. Sorry, gathered twigs and uh, I'm going to use that on the baskets and on the leaves. And there I'm just kind of adding a little bit of shading to the side there. This has been sped up four times. Clearly I don't paint that fast. <laughs> uh, but with four images it took a little bit of time. And now I'm, I grab the Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide ink for the rings on the basket. And I didn't really wait I wish I should have, for the basket itself to dry. And you can kind of tell because some of that brown came in there. So I'm drying it with my, my towel. And once I'm done painting, I, I used my heat tool off camera to make sure that those are dry because I'm planning on doing some die cutting of those images. And if they aren't dry, it's just going to basically tear the paper. So now I'm going to use my Sizzix side kit here, side kick here. That's the, the thing I showed yesterday or the other day in a haul video. Um, was so excited to use it. So I did this, I showed it in an unboxing video the other day. And so now I'm going to actually get to use it. Uh, I grabbed my dies for these sets, the coordinating die, along with a little bit of washi tape, which is basically a low tack tape. And I'm going to put those dies in place and hold that down with that washi tape. And I don't show you all the die cutting because you can see there's a ton of apples. It took me a little while to die cut all of those, but it's definitely better than hand cutting them. As you can see, you just kind of set it in place, crank that baby through, and voila, you have a die cut image. So I do that for all the rest of those apples and the uh, other three bushels. And I also die cut four circles with my machine, as you can see, because I decided I wanted a back panel for those apples. I'm just deciding on placement here. And to stamp the sentiment, I use my Mini Misty, some black cardstock that I have from my stash, and some Versamark ink. I prep the cardstock with my embossing bag, which just ensures that the powder doesn't stick anywhere I don't want it to stick. The benefit to the Mini Misty is that I get good stamp coverage, and if I don't get it on the first try, I can always restamp. So now off camera, I am covering that ink with some white, white detail embossing powder, and now I'm going to melt that with my heat tool. 
which I love watching. You can just watch it melt. <laughs> and then there, I did it four different times, but that time I'm showing you my reverse tweezers, which are really great for holding stuff if you've got to heat something, because that heat tool will burn you if you're not careful. And I've decided to stamp that little heart all around that image, and that's from the set, and I did that three times in the Candied Apple Distress Oxide ink, just around the image on my circle panel. I did that for all of them. And to make my card base, I took a piece of four and a quarter by 11 inch sage cardstock from my stash, and I scored it at five and a half to make it a top folding A2 size card. And now, honestly, I, I don't know what this cardstock is. I actually got it from a friend of mine at church who didn't want it. It has a little bit of sparkle to it. Uh, normally I can kind of have at least a little bit of an idea where my cardstock may have come from, but this I have no idea. I just really think it's pretty and she didn't want it, so I took it. To assemble my cards, I'm using some Tombow Mono Multi to adhere the panel. And I've said this before, I really like using that for big areas like that simply because it gives me a little bit of wiggle room if I didn't get it down exactly where I wanted it. And I'm going to do that for all four of the cards. Same thing. And then for the circles, the sentiment, and the apples, I use foam tape. I used a lot of foam tape. And I just adhere those down all pretty much the same. And to finish off the inside of my card, once I've got all those down, I'm going to take all those little single apples and I am going to glue four apples in the inside of each one of those. I put one up in the top and the three down at the bottom just to give a little bit of visual interest. And that's going to end up finishing off my card here once I get all those adhered with that Tombow Mono Multi. And having done that four times, I have a set of four cards. So all in all, it probably took me about an hour to do all of the cards, but not much if you think about just one card. So I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe even learned something or got inspired. If you did, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. As always, thanks for stopping by.